Hey, it's Richard with Matthews Wealth Management. Uh, we're going to be doing a different video today on what is the middle class and uh, why is it going away? I know everybody hates PowerPoints. I hate PowerPoints. I don't like when people read off of PowerPoints, but there's a lot of detail. Um, the work I put in was putting it together. So deal with it and uh, enjoy my embellishments. All right. So to define the middle class, we can go to investopedia.com. And I loved this reference because it just tells you everything you need to know about how things are put together. So Karl Marx <laughs> referred to the middle class as part of the bourgeoisie, i.e. the petit bourgeoisie or small business owner. Wait a minute. Hold up. I take offense to that, but we'll continue. When he describes the way in which capitalism operates, because he had a great understanding of it, uh, in opposition to the working class. Yeah, employers hate employees. Uh, which he termed the proletariat. And then they've got a typo, three, because I copied and pasted. The term middle class itself has shifted in meaning over time. Of course it has, because we like to redefine everything. Um, having once referred to a person who had the means to rival nobles, to the contemporary meaning that is more akin to the upper end of the working class, because we still think about the working class and the non-working oppressors. Yeah, some of us do. Some of us actually still think that way. So let's get to an actual way to think about what is middle class, because it's not what it was, right? I think we can all say it shifted, but should it have? I don't think so. So we can define it on income levels, because, you know, when we say middle, that's what we're thinking of is middle class, how we live, right? And we live by income, something like that. So in 2023, I pulled this off US debt clock. Y'all love that. I love that. 36,143 is our current median income for a single wage earner, okay? So that's 3,000 a month before taxes. Yeah, pay your taxes, which actually you're probably not paying much tax at that point because the standard deduction is so high, but you know, we can make it sound bad by saying before taxes. So after you pay your taxes, which a big part is FICA, right? That's 17.54%, but they only got to pay half of it because they work for an employer Anyway, now they got to go rent and buy food and utility and clothes and cars and oh my gosh, that's not middle class, but that is median income. Ouch. 2022, the median income for a household, it doesn't necessarily mean two, but a household, it's kind of an average, 74,540, which is down 2.3% from 2021. You know, we've only had four times where we've dropped our median, median income year to year. Um, that's bad. That's really bad. And that's after we printed all that money. So how are wages going down? Oh, that's right, because it's not being paid out. It's not being put into the economy. Hmm, where's it going? We'll get to that. So Pew Research Center comes out and they define the middle class as between two thirds to double the median income. Okay, let's do some hard math, guys. We take this 74,580 and we multiply it by two thirds, okay? And then we multiply it by two and we see what that gap looks like. 49,719 for a household. That's not single, that's a household. To 149,160. Okay, that's some money, right? That's, I'd argue that's, that's legit, right? That, that might be middle class, right? Um, in fact, if we look at what 150,000 is, that falls in the top 20%. Is that middle? <laughs> no, 50% is middle. The top 20% is upper middle. But no, Pew Research Center says 149 is, wow, what a discrepancy. Okay, so you're a household and you make 50 grand and your neighbor, let's call them the Joneses, make 150 grand. Are y'all both middle class? No. But Pew Research Center says, yes, you are. We've defined it that way. So you should be happy that you are middle class, which is the equivalent of a noble. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, cool. So income level is a stupid way, especially if we trust Pew, on uh, how we're going to say middle class. So let's continue. Let's talk about lifestyle. I think we hit this one and I'm giving a lot of credit at the end to the people that I helped sort that, that helped me source a lot of this information um, on how we can think about all of this stuff. So I, I pulled from some people's lists. I added my stuff and it's just a good mix, I think. So 
Meaningful healthcare insurance. Okay, does that mean Obamacare? Yeah, unfortunately, because that's what we got, right? Um, is there a such thing as like leveraged uh, group health insurance anymore? Not really. Not for a small business owner. I'm on the exchange because that's it. Uh, when you hire in a small business and people say, I want benefits, sorry, they don't exist anymore. And if you know me and I've been involved in a hiring process, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> home equity above 25%. So, I mean, if you put 20% down and then you give it a few years, cool. <laughs> Who puts 20% down? Who puts anything down? 5% or whatever. And, uh, and you've got to build that equity. Well, if we can inflate the value of your house, we can build that home equity in there, right? But then we inflate everything else, so maybe we don't hit the other things. Oh, man, it's just one point, right? But this is a piece of what I would say a lifestyle of middle class looks like. At least a 6% savings rate, okay? So we would take what your income is, and you're at least contributing to a Roth IRA or you know, cash reserve or um, putting it into a 401k or whatever, right? So you have a savings rate, meaning... You're not spending every dollar that you get. Unfortunately, um, we'll get to that point later. Significant retirement savings. I pulled that from a list. I put the quotes on there. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I mean, maybe what we could think about and, and define at some point is what somebody's income multiplier into a significant uh, retirement savings would look like. So if you're 50, do you have four times your income in long-term savings of some sort? Nope, you don't. Uh, should you? Yeah, you should, because that's only four years of income in retirement. But no, we got Social Security, so that'll pay for it, right? Whatever. Um, reliable, fully insured vehicle for each wage earner. I think that's reasonable. We have that in my household. Um, every single one of my clients has that. Yeah, I think that's a good one, right? That should be there. Okay, so... Funding for high quality, <laughs> I put that in there for a reason, education or recreation for children. You need to invest in your offspring. You need to have a purpose to grow beyond because when you are unable to take care of yourself and you're spending down your funds or whatever, do you want high quality, not education, but high quality, anything else? You should because you need to create productive citizens for our economy. So high quality education that might be like uh, classical conversations or private school or charter school or, um, you know, uh, investing in tutors or something to make your kids valuable to others. Um, not government school because it's terrible, y'all. We, we're, we're illiterate. We can't pass math tests. All you teachers out there, I'm sure you got a good heart and everything, but y'all just collectively suck. And maybe it's because... You have too many kids and you're not, you don't have the ability to discipline kids. And I get it. Life's hard, right? But you're creating an environment. Uh, maybe it's union's fault. Just reflect because what, what we've invested and what we're getting out of it, it's a bad ROI. And if you work there, do something about it or walk away. Same thing with police, by the way. Just you're working for public. If you can't do it, don't do it and make the whole system better. Anyway, that's a whole rabbit hole I don't want to get into. Ability to afford an annual vacation. On the credit card? No. <laughs> Part of your budget that also still allows for a savings rate. Living within your means that those means afford an annual vacation. No credit card debt. Kind of just mentioned that. No credit card debt. Those of you in Matthew's Wealth Management that have a credit card and pay it off every month and earn points and rewards, good for you. For everybody else in the world, no credit card debt. There's no need for it. There's absolutely no need for it if you know how to balance a checkbook. Back to the education. Y'all aren't teaching that, are you? You should. Anyway, moving on past the lifestyle level. Reality. Here's where we are, guys, looking at the middle class and why it's not here anymore. More than 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. So is that because we're not earning enough? I've, I've done missions work. I've been in third world countries. I know what poverty looks like. I'm around in upstate South Carolina and North Carolina. I also know what poverty looks like in America. But 60% of us aren't, right? Which tells me that the lifestyle is actually a cultural issue. People spend everything on 
junk, right? And that junk is what makes us the biggest consumer nation uh, on the planet, which you could say is good for the economy, but it's actually terrible for the dollar. And, and we may, I may get into that later, but I may not. Uh, anyway, so this was a good quote from Mark Fields. The consumer, is what he was referencing, must make over 100000 a year to afford a car. He's referencing a new car. Mark Fields is the former CEO of Ford. I think he knows his market pretty well. And those of you who go out and buy a brand new car and take it out of your IRA or whatever and pay 22% tax to do it, or you finance it and pay, I guess now they have the promotional 2.5%, but you're paying it on the back end anyway. Like, There's no such thing as a free lunch, guys. To buy a new car, you need to be upper middle class. If you're not making 150 grand a year, why are you buying a new car? In fact, go read Millionaire, Millionaire Next Door. You should never buy a new car. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the American households have an average of 10,170 in credit card debt. Don't have credit cards. But you see this number exploding. It's up 37% since COVID. Hmm. Y'all watch my uh, M2 money supply, right? Like, what is the actual monetary growth um, since COVID? 37%. Big shock, right? So as the government and, uh, and all of us go into debt at the same time, it's a cultural problem. Don't do the credit card debt. 41% of median income, right? We just went through median income. 41% of that is required to support a median home payment. 40% of your money is just to pay for a home. The economy is it's unaffordable. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the symptom of reality. So everything's out of reach, right? So as, as we're looking at middle class, um, those of you that said uh, during COVID when, we, when Trump and uh, Pelosi started to just print the money machine and shut everybody down. I said, well, if you don't own a house now, you're not going to own a house. And I was right. So out of 70 to 80 percent bracket of income, just to kind of give you a picture of what is middle class, is 118,700 to 153,000, right? So if that's what we deem middle class, it's not half of the country that's middle class. 10 percent of the country is middle class, right? Middle class is what makes an economy grow. Middle class, even Karl Marx said, it's the small business owner that should be middle class. 10%, guys, we got a major issue if middle class is that narrow, right? Which means that you're either ultra, ultra wealthy, which I hate trying to conflate income and wealth. They're two very different things. One is property and the other one is, is kind of the value of your labor, right? But 10% is just microscopic. That should be 50 but it's not, okay? That's the 70 and 80% bracket that is middle class. People just right in there. 10% of the American population hold 88% of US stocks. Whoa. <laughs> so when we say middle class, right? Like, like when we say retirement savings, significant retirement savings, do you think you own stocks in that? Yep. So if you don't own those stocks and you're not in that 10% owning 88%, of the US stocks, oh my gosh. It also means that wealth is severely concentrated in the top 1%, which is definitely the case. Hmm, how did that happen? Capitalism? Nope. All right, 600,000 Americans are homeless. Have you seen homeless camps in your city? Yeah, you have. What about like, you, you see all this stuff out in San Francisco, whatever, they're, they're the big places where these people go and they flock because they're supported and they're enabled, right? But the rest of it, it's like here in Greenville, right? Greenville has a bunch of homeless camps. And in Georgia, there was a, a freaking shooting with the police going on in homeless camps, right? Like, that's a problem. Is that, is that their fault? No, it's because we've created a terrible system, right? We had a thriving middle class and something is eroding it, right? All right. Owning a home hasn't been this unaffordable since. I love this. <laughs> 1984. There was a theme with that. But anyway. Moving on. All right, so what causes this deletion of the middle class? Well, Richard Cantillon, create, uh, he, he came up with the Cantillon effect. He's, a, he's the Irish dude of French descent, hence the name or whatever. He's got a great first name, obviously, but trickle-down inflation is the theory, right? So the idea is that when new money is printed and given to somebody, the very first person to get that new money spends it and guess what? 
they get something for nothing. Yeah, that's theft, okay. And then that person gets it, and they spend it. Okay, nobody's noticed the price has gone up, so they get something for something that they sold, right? But they're still buying old prices. Who gets hurt the worst? The people that get that printed money last. Okay, so the concept behind the, uh, the stimulus money during the, the helicopter money, if you will, during COVID was that let's get it into their hands first. They can spend it. It won't go into the ultra elite. That was actually decent, I guess, if you really care about stimulating demand and not causing deflation when COVID and blah, blah. All right, so that was its own thing. But the later you are in that line, the more expensive things cost and the less valuable those dollars are. So who gets the money first, right? The, uh, the Federal Reserve is, is in charge of printing the money, right? That's money supply. That's why we track him too around here. So as they print that money, who gets it? The government. And then who? Investment banks. Uh-oh. <laughs> and, uh, and then who? Uh, pharma. And uh, let's see, military. Oh my gosh. It's all the big, oh, tech. The monopolies of the world get this free money first. Oh, whoops, did that just blow everything up for you? Because that's the issue. Credit expansion, just in general, that's inflation, right? So it's, it's very similar. Like if, if, if I'm a small business, which I am, and I need to borrow money for real estate, which I do, and I get that money from a bank and I pay a terrible interest rate right now, um, an average interest rate right now, uh, I need to correct myself because I tell people that. If that's the case, then that money is created out of nothing, okay? The banks create money also, not just the Federal Reserve and money supply, right? But banks, if they have, if they take $1,000 on deposit and they loan out $10,000 in a loan, they created $9,000. Now that 9,000 gets deleted when I pay back the loan of 10,000, right? Okay, so that's how that works. But that credit expansion creates new money for me, that the small business owner, to buy drywall and um, you know, uh, HVAC systems and electrical work and all of that stuff that goes into the economy that raises prices because I'm competing in prices in time with all these other people waiting on contractors. And so that, that new expanded credit that the bank created adds to the inflation situation, which makes everybody else's prices go up. Okay, Had I not been able to get that free $9,000 out of nowhere, then I wouldn't have been able to drive up that, that price everywhere else. Hope that makes sense. If not, call me. Monetary inflation, that is M2 money supply. That is where the Fed says, uh, print, right? Uh, zeros and ones, right? They print zeros and ones. They just add money on both sides of their ledger and send it out into the, go into the, uh, the economy there. Government spending, period. Not deficit spending. That's the worst kind. But government spending of any kind. I just mentioned about the education and the police and, and that, that world of inefficiency, right? But the fact that there is inefficiency in government means that there's waste. Economics is about resources, scarce resources being used efficiently to create things that we need and value, okay? If there is no mechanism to make the library more efficient other than, um, you know, Doris doesn't feel like working today, she keeps her job because you can't fire anybody in government, that's waste. That's wasting a resource, right? The money you pay somebody to do nothing or to be inefficient or ineffective or rude at their job does not make our world any better. Just the mere fact that that money was not used by an entrepreneur that creates value means that you are, you're raising the cost and decreasing the quality. Government spending, period, is what's causing a lot of this. So it's not about, oh, we don't bring in enough taxes. It's about just leave it in the private sector. The public sector sucks at their job, and we all know it. It's time to act like it and stop giving it to them, right, legally. Pay your taxes. All right. So how else would you destroy the middle class? Because I'm curious. I would like to see in some comments. What else could they do? to destroy the middle class. I've got some ideas. I just want to see what everybody else has to say. So thanks to Charles Hugh Smith and Michael Snyder for their ongoing blogs. This is kind of one of the things they're really big on is the erosion of the middle class. And I guess I'll thank CNN a little bit for that 41 thing, 41% uh, median reference, whatever. So uh, that's all I got on what is the middle class? Why is it going away? And uh, I'd love to hear more about how you would destroy it.
further. Anyway, see you next time.